Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test. Oh, making sure the mic's on. <laughs> yes. Showing you how to navigate the GLP system, or sometimes called the GDL, Graduated Drivers Licensing Program, or the Graduated uh, GDL, GPL. Graduated, ah, I can't remember. How to get a license in this day and age. <laughs> so stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about uh, GLP, Graduated Licensing Program. How to get your learners, how to get a license, and how to move forward uh, with your driver's license and start having some empowerment, having some ability to drive yourself around and not have to rely on uh, public transit and those types of things. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, a couple of things going on here at Smart Drive Test. Uh, Cody's here. Uh, yeah, and if you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from in the world. And if you're new to Smart Drive Test, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain crash free, and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, hit that thumbs up, hit that bell. That way you'll get instant notification when I get the videos up for you. And leave a comment and share the stuff around on social media. All of that helps out. Uh, all the new drivers who are working towards getting their license or getting any class of license, regardless of where they are in the world, uh, Smart Drive Test will help you earn that license, regardless of class of license or regardless of your age. So we're going to help you with all of that. <clears throat> so Colton's here from Victoria, BC, the capital of British Columbia, uh, our province here. So Cody is in North Van in BC, North Vancouver, I'll say that, and uh, Army is from South Florida. That's excellent. Whereabouts in South Florida are you? Down near Miami, uh, Army there. So just let us know, and then we'll what we'll do is we'll pop over to the PowerPoint presentation here, and I'll do the PowerPoint presentation. I'll talk for about ten or fifteen minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll answer any questions you have about getting a license, uh, starting your career as a truck or bus driver, any questions you have about driving. And uh, just one interesting note in current affairs in the media this week. Uh, no, just before I talk about that, Corey is here as well. Bricks for Wheels, you can see his username in blue there. Corey is the moderator and keeps out all the bad people who <laughs> have a predilection for profanity. Yes, and uh, so I was, I went for the alliteration there. So uh, Army is in the Keys in South Florida there. That's excellent. Awesome, and a few people are showing up here. I'm just kind of filling in a bit of time here and letting a few people catch up because I changed the time for the live feed at in the new year and made it three hours earlier for our people on the East Coast so they're not up till 10 o'clock at night. So that was the reason that I did that. So we're just waiting for a few other people to show up here. So in the news this week, autonomous vehicles. Uh, there's a video here on the channel. Corey will find that for you. Uh, consumer confidence in autonomous vehicles has dropped to an all-time low of I think 47% or something. Most people, you know, more than half of people do not trust autonomous vehicles. But according to Elon Musk, who's been pushing this for autonomous vehicles, self-driving vehicles, uh, we're going to have autonomous vehicles in the next 11 months. I mean, we do. It is here. Obviously, it is here. But it's very, it's very much in its seminal stages. It, uh, it is not. Uh, being mass marketed to the the consumer and personally I don't think that a lot of people want autonomous vehicles or are ready for autonomous vehicles lots of people like to drive I know I like to drive so you know I'm not really sure you know I want self-driving vehicles and those types of things just as yet I mean don't get me wrong I did nothing I'd love better than to be able to sit in my car and have it take me somewhere and I'd be able to read a book or you know watch a video on YouTube or something like that so so that was in the news this week. So, uh, so Antigua, New York City, uh, Yonkers, we've got people here, so that's excellent. And there's, Corey got the video up on self-driving uh, uh, self cars, and basically what I said is, is that the technology is simply not ready, and we won't see this technology probably, I suspect, until closer to the end of the century is, is when I see this starting to come in and start making inroads uh, <laughs> into our, you know, markets and those types of things. So Fekru is here, Lucky's here, excellent, and Cody says that he dislikes autonomous vehicles for the moment, yes, and Cody, I'm not sure that the technology is, is ready either. And the other thing about it is that, uh, you know, some of the things that I fight with with computers, because as you know, I have a YouTube channel, and I work on social media, and I try to keep my 
website going and some of the just some of the problems that I encounter I think to myself really we're in this day and age and computers can't figure this out I mean we're going through a, a name thing right now with one of our forms on the website and it's just doing something crazy and I'm just like wow that's 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 incredible so Jonathan is here uh, Weda is here from Texas Tracy's tuning in from Granada excellent Mara is here uh, so excellent Jonathan says self-driving vehicles are not reliable it adds more carelessness to drivers and it diminishes driving skills no that's absolutely true Jonathan I would I would argue that uh, some some of the th some of the technologies that we currently have in vehicles or road drivers, uh, driver skills, uh, you know, uh, blind spot indicators for one thing. I mean, I, I totally agree with blind spot indicators, but a lots of people, because lots of people don't shoulder check, uh, backup cameras, those types of things, yes. So it does undermine driver skills to a certain degree, and it takes a very conscious effort when you get into these types of vehicles to continue to have a high level of driver skill. So I don't know. We can we can talk about that more after the presentation. Rain, uh, Rainia is uh, tuning in from Vegas. Hello from Vegas. That's awesome. So I'm just going to pop over. I'm going to go through the presentation. I'll come back, and we can answer any questions uh, you have about autonomous vehicles, getting a license, starting a career as a truck or bus driver, or all that. So all about vehicles. I'm here. I had to step out to cook some food. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. So yeah, so we'll get going here on the presentation, then I'll come back and I'll answer more questions for you. So just bear with me here. Uh, there we go. Okay. So getting a driver's license, uh, and we're going to talk about the GLP program, the Graduated Licensing Program, or sometimes referred to as the GDL, the Graduated Driver's Licensing Program. Uh, the Graduated, the, the GLP, the GDL started in New Zealand in 1987 uh, with a novice phase, or not a novice phase, a learner's phase and a novice phase and then a full license and this very much spread most uh, most of the countries in the world now, Europe, the United States of America, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Britain, all of them have a graduated licensing program so if you're going to get a license you're going to have to have a graduated licensing program. Uh, yes, uh, just get on the right screen here. There we go. Okay, page down. For those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test, I'm Rick August. I do have a PhD. Uh, I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. Uh, early 2000s, I moved to Australia. There, I drove for Greyhound and a regional bus line uh, called V-Line, which basically was a bus system that was part of, you know, the state uh, transportation, public transportation system. 1997, I became a licensed commercial driving instructor. So most of my uh, expertise is in commercial vehicles, particularly tractor trailers, and with an expertise in air brakes. And for those of you watching who are getting a CDL license, I just released Air Brakes Explained Simply. That's over at the website. Uh, you can find the link down in the description there. And in 2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with a PhD in legal history. For those of you who may not be aware, Legal history is the study of policing, courts, and prisons, and my expertise is in policing, oddly enough, as it relates to traffic. So the other thing that we're doing this year, and I am on a mission to get caught up, I'm just trying to get over the holidays and get myself organized here, but the 100K campaign, our mission to help 100,000 drivers earn their license in this year uh, is what we're going to try and do, and we're going to have a draw every month for a $100 gas card, and, we're, and I'm going to put a video up and get some details up uh, hopefully before the end of the month here and get that going as well so you can find that over at the smart drive test website more details over there and Corey will get the link up for you as well all right the graduated licensing program so the first thing you got to do is you got to get a learner's license and the learner's license consists of a theory test and what I tell students is get your learner's license as soon as you turn 16 as soon as you are eligible to go and write your learner's license write it on the day of because you want to get the clock ticking as soon as possible because you must have your learner's license for one year which means that you have to drive in the car with a mentor somebody who has a license so it's either your parents you know your grandparents or somebody else who has a driver's license an uncle an aunt a friend somebody that you can get to help you out and learn how to drive and you have to do that for a year which can be a bit of a pain in the butt uh, trying to help get somebody to help you to learn how to drive and I've had lots of smart drivers say that they can't find mentors and people to get help them to do that so the learners test that you have to write usually consists of 50 questions 
Uh, the 50 questions, uh, the knowledge test is about road signs, basic right away, attitudes, the driving task, and I've talked about the driving task before, and there's a video, and Corey will get that up for you. Uh, the driving task consists of light, weather, the driver, vehicles, traffic, and the road, and those are the six different uh, aspects of the driving task that they'll ask you about on uh, your theory test as well. They're gonna to talk to you about ter terminology, you know, complex intersections, uh, painted islands, right of way, those types of things, advanced greens and whatnot. So you're gonna to have to know all of the terminology as well, and you can learn that from your local driver's manual, the handbook. Now, I tell students, don't read the handbook from cover to cover. It'll just, you know, if, unless you have insomnia, don't do it. Uh, go on the internet, find practice driving test questions. There's tons of them on the internet. Uh, here in British Columbia, we have the Richmond Public Library. You just type in Richmond Public Library and type in driving tests and that will come up. Also, there's some on my website as well. You can find some practice driving tests. Go and do those. Don't use those as a measure of your ability. Rather, use them as a learning tool. So go through, do the questions, and then go back. And the pieces that you don't have or the pieces that are challenging you, look those up in your driver's manual and just read those sections of it. But continue to do the driving uh, test questions. And when you are consistently getting... Uh, 80 or 90 percent then you're ready to go and write your learner's test at the local uh, DMV or other authority that's uh, providing licensing in your state or province. Alright so once you enter into the learner phase you must have a mentor. I know in the province of Ontario uh, the licensed driver that's with you must have four years of experience and that's indicated by four dots underneath the picture on the driver's license. Uh, there's passenger restrictions. Uh, you can only have one other passenger in the vehicle that's related to you, you know, sibling, mom, dad, grandparents, those types of things. You must have zero blood alcohol. There's no phone use, either hands-free or handheld. You can't drive at night in some places. And these restrictions will be listed in the handbook. So have a look at your specific state or province and that will tell you what restrictions you have for your GLP program. And then in Ontario, you cannot drive on 400 highways. It's the QEW and the 401, 400 highways, unless you're with a licensed driving instructor. So you can't do that. So Ontario, the province of Ontario here in Canada is probably the most restricted in terms of uh, restrictions for GLP programs, but other states and provinces have those as well. So have a look in your own handbook. Uh, mentor is usually gonna be your parents, it's gonna be family members, or it's gonna be friends. So for the first year as a learner license, uh, with your learner's permit, you're gonna have to have somebody in the vehicle with you. Then after that, once you finish the year and you are eligible to go for and get your novice license, you're gonna have to take an on-road test and you're gonna to have to practice all of the components to be able to do that. Once you end, pass that road test and go into the novice phase, uh, there's passenger restrictions, you're only allowed two other people in the vehicle, and uh, cell phone use is, you can't have any cell phone use, zero blood alcohol, uh, you can't drive between the hours of one and five in the morning, and there's harsher penalties for moving violations, so if you get caught for speeding, or you get caught for making a turn contrary to the sign, or those types of things, uh, it doesn't take very much. I think you're only allowed six demerit points on your license as opposed to a full license, which allows you 15. And if you get six demerit points, they yank your license from you, and unfortunately, you have to start over again. So they're pretty harsh penalties. Now, for the road test that you have to take to enter the novice phase, uh, as I've mentioned before in other videos, uh, there's four components for an on-road test, speed management, space management, observation, and communication. And you have to have those four pieces in place in order to be successful on passing an on-road test. Speed management, flow of traffic, the posted speed limit, whichever is less is the, is the speed that you have to travel uh, for the purposes of your road test. Speed, uh, space management, don't get near other any other road users, don't get any near any fixed objects. That way, uh, you're going to pass your road test and you're not going to be in danger or at risk when you're driving. Uh, stop at the correct stopping position at stop sign intersections before the uh, stop line, before the crosswalk line, or if neither of those exist or there's not a sidewalk, then where the two roads meet. Stop in traffic so you can see the tires of the vehicle make in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. And then uh, stay away from pedestrians that you need at least one lane buffer of space when they're moving away from you. So if you're making a right hand turn, for example, uh, they want to attain the center of the road before you make your turn on a multi lane road. So say there's two lanes of traffic, they have to attain the center. All right, so that's space management. And then your following distance is going to be two to three seconds. And again, uh, Corey will get that video for you on space management. It's the VEDA one, uh, Corey. 
that will give people on how to measure following distance. Observation, you have to observe continuously while you're driving on a road test. You have to look far down the road, in, check the center mirror, down the road again, in, check the instrument panel, far down the road, both shoulders of the road, in, uh, check your wing mirrors, and then repeat that scanning pattern. Anytime you're gonna back up or do a slow speed maneuver, 360 degree uh, scan before you start to back up, and when you do back up, you have to look out the back window. You have to shoulder check a minimum of two times anytime you move the vehicle laterally or when you're turning. So know that that shoulder checking is a major component for a road test for you to be successful. And then finally, communication. And there's five ways we communicate uh, when we're driving. Lights, signals, your horn, hand gestures, appropriate hand gestures. Make sure you t uh, wave with all five fingers, not telling people they're number one on a road test because you won't be successful on your road test. Uh, and then eye contact, if you've got a pedestrian, you don't know what that pedestrian is doing, get eye contact with them before you start to move. And then finally, the position of your vehicle on the roadway indicates to other road users what you're doing. All right. So these are some of the slow speed maneuvers that you need to be able to execute for the purposes of a road test. Parallel parking, three point turns, two point reverse turn, stall parking, U-turn. And there's a video on every one of these maneuvers. Uh, here on the channel. I'm not going to ask Corey to get all these up because there's just too many of them. Uh, but do have a look at the Learn to Drive video. This will get you going and show you the fundamentals of working in a parking lot and some exercises that will help you to get comfortable with the primary controls and learn space and place where the vehicle is in space and place. And this is important and will improve your overall driving. Now probably parallel parking is probably the most daunting slow speed maneuver you have to do and it challenges most drivers, even, even veteran drivers, not new drivers. So know that as well. So these are the requirements. These are the slow speed maneuvers. Uh, maybe Corey, what you could just do is just put up the uh, playlist on uh, slow speed maneuvers because there is a, a playlist for that. All right, so leading up to your on-road test, get as much practice as possible. Practice in different vehicles, not in the weeks preceding your test, but in the months preceding your test. If you can drive your uncle's car, you can drive your friend's car, you can drive your parent's car. The more experience you can get in different vehicles, the better driver you're gonna be overall. And practice in many different driving environments. If it's at nighttime, get, let your parents to drive. If it's raining, it's snowing, uh, there's glaring sun, any type of practice that you can get, the more practice you can get, the more comfortable you're going to be driving the vehicle. And again, move around in different vehicles and all of that's gonna help you out and get you prepared for your license. Now, one thing that you need to do is to book a practice road test. If you're not taking driving lessons with a local driving school, book a practice road test uh, seven to 10 days before your actual test. Make sure you book it at least three weeks out because many of these driving schools are busy and uh, you'll need some time to be able to book that before your road test. If you take a practice driving test, I can almost guarantee you that's 100% that you're gonna pass your road test because local driving instructors know all the nuances of where you're gonna be taking your test and they can give you feedback on your driving skills and abilities and they can tell you which needs uh, strengthening for the purposes of being successful on your road test. And it's a lot better to spend 20, 30, $40 on a practice road test with a local driving school than it is to fail your road test and then try and rebuild your confidence because it's tough to rebuild your confidence. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> we don't like to fail. So, you know, this is one of the ways you can preempt that is simply take a practice driving test uh, with a local driving school and then you can be uh, confident that you're going to pass your road test. So good luck on your road test. We'll head back over here and uh, we'll answer some questions that anybody has on the road test here. So Corey's got the videos up there. Thanks very much, Corey, for that. And we'll just see. Uh, Katine is from New York City. Hello. Um, <laughs> Cody says he doesn't trust his car radio. Why should he trust a <laughs> autonomous vehicle? That's funny. Uh, Jonathan, I wanted to say that I'm in my second week as a school bus driver and I love it. Excellent. That is great, Jonathan. Congratulations on working as a school bus driver. That's really great. Uh, I'm so lucky to find a job near where I live and they pay a little more. Uh, six hour shifts instead of four and they have a 401k plan. Uh, that's comparable to the RESP here in Canada, not RESP, RRSP, retirement, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, uh, except inexperienced commercial drivers, so it's a great start. Yeah, no, that is really great, Jonathan. I'm really glad to hear that. Okay, Cherish, how can I pass my skills test for CDL first time? 
Okay, so Cherish B, uh, do as many practice driving test questions as you can get. Uh, we do have some here. Uh, there's some over at the Smart Drive Test website as well. Richmond Public Library here in British Columbia. If you type Richmond Public Library in uh, driving tests, that will come up as well, and they have some there uh, that you can do. And the Richmond Public Library, um, actually, I've edited most of their questions, their CDL questions, so you can do that as well. Uh, okay, Jonathan, the CDL skills test consists of straight backing, alley, dock, offset, right, left, and parallel park. You can see YouTube videos about it. I've done that when I took my skills test. Jonathan, just remind me, where did you take your bus license again? Okay, uh, so Corey's there, Jonathan, uh, Jaden, uh, when I was off the bus, I saw my school bus out for warning lights or do something crazy, which I've never seen before. So the lights on the bus are not working properly. Is that what you're telling me, Jaden? <laughs> okay, uh, Jonathan, I remember at Parallel Park and I know how to do it my own alternative way when I know I reach the point where I'm in. I turn the rest of the wheel to the left and it leaves a small gap. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, okay. Now, Jonathan, when you're talking about parallel parking, are you talking about parallel parking a bus or are you talking about parallel parking a car? Just leave a comment for me there and I'll, I'll know that. All right, uh, what else we got here? Okay, yeah. So we were, prior to me doing the presentation for the licenses, we were talking about autonomous vehicles, you know, kind of like uh, Minority Report or what was that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where they were in the autonomous vehicles. <laughs> so yeah I don't think they're coming anytime soon so uh, know that uh, yeah because the problems I've been having with computers and whatnot so but you know they're they're on the horizon they're, they're making they're working at it but it's I don't see it's uh, having a, a market application anytime soon okay Mili, uh how to confidence uh, to, how to improve my confidence I'm the student driver uh, Mealy, have a look. Uh, Corey will get the video up for you on fear and anxiety about driving and some of the uh, ways that you can overcome that, some of the skills and abilities that you can put in place. Just remember the most four most powerful words in the English language. I can do this, right? And when you're driving, just say to yourself, I am a safe driver. I am a good driver. So that way you can improve your skills and improve your abilities. Uh, when you're learning how to drive and practicing. And as well, the other thing, uh, Mealy, that I suggest to new drivers is to work on those exercises in the Learn to Drive video. If you can do slow speed maneuvers and you can work with the pylons in the parking lot, that's gonna improve your overall driving ability. And I cannot stress that enough. You know, it's like a musician who is learning chords, right? That's the fundamentals of music, is learning how to play the chords on whatever musical instrument you're learning to play. It's the same thing with driving. The fundamentals of learning how to drive are doing the slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot. If you can do those fundamentals, it's gonna teach you where the vehicle is in space and place relate in relation to fixed objects and other uh, road users on the roadway as well. It's going to teach you how to master and work the primary controls of the vehicle. So it's going to translate into your overall driving and your overall driving is going to become better. So that's where I, I really uh, encourage people to do that for the purpose of passing the road test. Okay, uh, asthma, please explain about backing a car. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Uh, b -b 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 asthma. Uh, yep. Okay, so we'll talk about backing cars. So when you back a car, uh, whether it's reverse uh, stall parking, whether it's parallel parking or whatnot, before you back up, so say, for example, uh, you pull up to do reverse stall parking. You've got a signal as you're approaching to where you're going to stall park, and then as soon as you stop the vehicle, put it into reverse. That way the reverse lights come on and it communicates to traffic behind you that you are turning because you have your turn signal on and you have your reverse lights on, therefore you're going to back up because as you may or may not know, as soon as you put the vehicle into reverse, the reverse lights, the white clear lights on the back of the vehicle activate, indicating to traffic behind you that you put the vehicle into reverse and you're going to back up. So before you actually start to move the vehicle backwards, do a 360 degree scan around the vehicle to make sure that there aren't other road users, and then put your hand on the passenger seat. You're, for those of us who drive on the right side of the road, put your, uh, <laughs> 
put your right hand on the back of the passenger seat and look out the back window while you're backing up, okay? Yes, I'm, I'm a driving instructor and I'm right and left impaired. <laughs> so I have to think about that thing. I have to put my fingers up and go, loser, loser, loser left. <laughs> so that's how I remember left, okay? So yeah. I, yeah, I'm right and left impaired, and I got a job where I tell people to go right and left my whole life. So that's what happened there. Okay, Jonathan, I'm talking about parallel parking in a car. Excellent. Thanks, Jonathan, for clarifying that because I didn't know whether you had to do that for your bus license as well. Uh, Cody, I found stall parking much more difficult than parallel parking. It's different for everybody. Yeah, and, you know, Cody, some... some Maneuvers are really easy and some are really tough for some people, uh, you know, so it, it just depends, uh, you know, uh, so it, it's not one's easier, one's harder than the other. It's just it's the way it works out for some drivers, right? Okay, Jonathan, the bus is a different story. I remember the pivot point technique using the rear of the bus to parallel park. Yeah, okay. Uh, Zoe, just want to thank you personally. I have my license now here in the U.S., but my first time to drive in the snow and having problems driving at night due to glare. Any tips for this? Yes, uh, Zoe. Uh, Corey will get the video up for you on night driving. And the other thing about glare is, is that don't be looking over there on the other side of the road. Look down at the edge of the road where the fog line is. The fog line is that solid white line on the outside of the road and make sure that you're looking down on that because one of the things you want to do at night Zoe is you want to try and protect your night vision because we all have night vision basically what happens is, is our pupils dilate they get bigger at night with less light so that we can see better at night but the problem is is that when we get glaring uh, lights from other vehicles and ambient light from uh, overhead uh, street lights and those types of things it it erodes our night vision so you want to try and protect your night vision all right, and uh, snow, there's there's a whole playlist, and Corey will put the whole, whole playlist up for you on uh, driving in the wintertime and some of the things that you can do. And again, Zoe, one of the things you can do is just go get some of those pylons and go down to the local parking lot that's got some snow in it and just, you know, be aggressive on the primary controls and figure out what the vehicle's going to do uh, when you're driving, and that will help you out a little bit, okay? <clears throat> Okay, so Cody, you're taking your uh, road test this summer. Excellent. So you got lots of time to practice and do the exercises and get in as many vehicles as you can and drive with as many different ve uh, people as you can. Excuse me. And that's one of the other uh, points that I'll make as well is because when you take your road test, you're going to be in the vehicle with a complete stranger, somebody you've never met before. So the more practice you can get driving in different vehicles with different mentors and those types of things, that's going to make your driving easier as well because you're not going to be nervous because you've driven with all these different people who are going to give you different information and different techniques and ideas about driving. So once you get to your road test, if you've driven with Uncle John and you've driven with Aunt Sally and you've driven with your friend Marvin and you drove with Bill, who's your dad's best friend and army buddy, you know, once you drive with all these people, it's going to make getting to your road test a lot easier. And as I said, if you take your practice driving test uh, with a local driving school, then you're almost guaranteed that you're going to pass. It's very difficult for you to fail. I mean, obviously, you know, people who are ready do unfortunately fail their road test because something goes wrong from which they just can't recover on road test day. And that sometimes happens, which is unfortunate. But if you, you know, as they say, luck favors the prepared <laughs> so the more work you do the better prepared you are going to be for your road test okay Jaden uh, so sorry for missing all your live streams but I'm on my final exams for my permit test but I'm kind of cheating for the answers because Google is giving me the answers <laughs> okay don't rely solely on Google Jaden but make sure that you're understanding the answers too because uh, we can just regurgitate information but at some point you're gonna have to be able to understand it especially when you get into the vehicle and start driving that's gonna be important for you to be able to do so know that uh, for the purposes of getting ready for your road test and your on uh, on road road test and whatnot so okay <laughs> Cody, I have a friend named Marvin. That's funny. <laughs> so we got that down there for you. Excellent. And the other thing uh, I didn't mention 
uh, about the GLP GDL program that most of you're going to have to do is is that when you enter the learners phase you're going to have to have a sticker on the back of your car uh, this is the N uh, here in British Columbia you can see here and this stands for novice uh, for some countries, some states, it's going to be P, which is, stands for probation, probationary. This is the second phase of the GLP program. Uh, for the learner's phase, you're going to have an L. And these are, mag these are magnetic, and you're going to have to put them, stick them on the back of your car. Now, for some people, that's going to be a little bit tough because there isn't any place on the back of their vehicle. There are some vehicles that it's all plastic. It's not metal. So these magnetic uh, will not stick on the back of the vehicle. So you got to stick them up underneath, you know, jam them in somewhere and those types of things. So uh, know that and uh, if the novice driver or the learner driver has been in the vehicle and they get out, uh, remember for mom and dad and friends and those types of things, uh, make sure that <laughs> you go around the back and take the sticker off the back too because uh, it kind of annoys other drivers when they see these on the back of the vehicles. I hate to say that, but it does. It, unfortunately it does, okay? All right, uh, any other questions? Any other thing that people want to talk about here today? Uh, what am I working on? Uh, I'm, I'm working on a collab with LPT guy, Serge. Uh, he does videos on Final Cut Pro. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a behind the scenes video. I'm going to show you how I set up my cameras in the car. And uh, I'm going to do that video on how to set up the cameras in the car. And I'm going to show you uh, how I do that setup for doing the videos in the car. And then I'm going to send the footage over to Serge. And Serge is going to show you how to do Final Cut Pro, which is, for those of you who may or may not know, it's the Apple's version of uh, what the heck is... Who knows what the movie making software is for not the people who do InDesign, Adobe. Uh, trying to think of it. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But anyway, uh, Final Cut Pro is kind of like iMovie on steroids. Actually, really big steroids because uh, there isn't just about anything you can do with making videos. And they actually make Hollywood films in Final Cut Pro. So it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, that'll be kind of fun. And you'll get kind of a, a look behind the scenes of what I'm doing here at Smart Drive Test and those types of things. So that's one of the collaborations that I'm working with uh, with Surge there, and that'll be I'm kind of looking forward to that. It'll be kind of fun. I'll be I'm, I'm interested to see what he's able to do with the with the video footage. That's very different from what I'm doing with my videos. Okay, Jaden, I was thinking of getting some aerial shots of Port Charlotte, Florida, for tomorrow, but not today because it's so windy. Uh, I have an outdoor drone. Excellent. That's great, Jaden, that you have a drone. And that, yeah, no, that'd be really great if you could put some of those up over on the Mastermind group. Uh, we have a Mastermind group over at the Facebook page, and I try and get in there at least every day and answer people's questions. And, of course, you can share information with the group as well. So consider that, I believe. Here, I'll just look for you. Just bear with me one sec here. Yes, it's down in the description, the link for the mastermind group, the Smart Drive Test Mastermind group. So if you haven't signed up for that already, consider uh, going over to Facebook and signing up for that well, as well. And, uh, you know, lots of great information on the Smart Drive Test website, our website and the Facebook page as well. Okay, Heather, I can only go with my instructor once every two weeks and I'm still having trouble with right turns and looking over my shoulder for turns or changing lanes. How can I be ready for my road test in March? Okay, Heather, uh, you got lots of time between now and March. Uh, you got two, you got six weeks. Excellent. So one of the things I would suggest, Heather, if you can get somebody to help you out to go down to the parking lot and look at the video on Learn to Drive and get some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons, look at the exercises in the video on Learn to Drive. And what I want you to do, Heather, is I want you to go down with those pylons and I want you to bang into the pylons with the car. Yes, you heard me. <laughs> I, I want you to bang into the pylons because I want you to figure out where the car is in space and place. I want to figure out. I want you to figure out where the nose of the car is. I want you to figure out where the back of the car is, where the sides are, because this is one of the problems that new drivers have is that they don't know where the vehicle is in space and place because you've got these big blind areas around your vehicle, right? You got a big blind area in front, in front of the nose of the vehicle. You got one off on the passenger side and those types of things. And if you can learn with pylons where the vehicle is in space and place, this is going to make your ability to drive on the roadway so much easier. So go down and work with the pylons, bang into the pylons, <laughs> knock them over, drive over them, those types of things and learn where your vehicle is in space and place. And then after you do that and have a bit of fun with that, then 
actually try and maneuver around the pylons and get as close to the pylons as you can and those types of things. And the other thing, Heather, is, is that sometimes you might have to actually get out of the vehicle and have a look and see where the pylon is in relation to your car. And then you know, okay, maybe I have to get a little bit closer or maybe I have to do this. And it will teach you to work the primary controls. And as well, you can do your shoulder checking while you're down there, while you're going around the pylon and looking uh, your shoulder checking because you want to make your shoulder check fairly quick, right? Because one of the things I tell smart drivers again and again is, is that when you're shoulder checking, you're not actually looking. You're not turning your head 90 degrees and you're hanging out there looking over there and see what's going on. You're not doing that. It's a quick head turn because what happens is, is that your peripheral vision in a healthy adult is 180 degrees. So if you put your hands out here, you should be able to see both your hands in your peripheral vision. But our peripheral vision is not clear. We have a central focused vision, which is about this big at arm's length. That's about all we can see clearly in our vision. It's our peripheral vision that sees everything else. So when our peripheral vision is drawn to light and movement, then we bring in our central vision to look more closely or inspect something. So when we're doing shoulder checks and we're doing that 90 degree head turn, we're just seeing to see whether our peripheral vision is going to be attracted to light or movement, whether there's a scooter, there's somebody on a bicycle, there's a pedestrian or whatnot in our blind areas around our vehicle. So that's all we're doing when we shoulder check. We're not actually studying and looking. We're just quick check to see whether there's movement over there or there's light or something else that's going to attract our attention. And then if there is, then, then we investigate further. But for shoulder checking, as you're saying, Heather, just quick head turn and that's all you do. And you can practice that while you're learning how to drive in the parking lot. Okay. Uh, Cody, is it possible to pass a road test without lessons from a driving school so you're committed and do the research? Uh, no, Cody. I've had people say that to me that they didn't take any, they didn't do any practice, they didn't do any driving lessons, uh, and then they went in for the road test and they passed. It is possible, but it's not very likely because the reason I say that is driving is not a spectator sport. It's not something you can watch other people do. You have to get in behind the wheel and you have to drive that car and you have to drive it a lot to be good at it because driving is, a, is an incredibly complex task. Uh, and I think my YouTube channel with almost 400 videos on it is, is, is testament to how complex the task is. So, uh, you know, because you can drive for a very long period of time and never encounter something. And then one day you're just going to encounter it because all of the conditions come together that culminate to make that driving traffic situation. And just, just a story about that, uh, Cody, uh, about a year ago, <laughs> going back to autonomous vehicles, I was approached by a company that was going to retrofit vehicles back to 2012 that they were going to make them autonomous. And I was, and so they approached me and they wanted me to come on board. And I was like, you know, I thought about it. I, I gave it a great deal of thought, like two or three weeks before I actually made a decision. And finally, after two, two or three weeks, I came up with the reason that this was not gonna work and why driving is so complex. You can take any traffic situation in any given location and you will never be able to replicate that traffic situation because at any given time, the vehicle, the vehicle makeup in that section of roadway, so let's say half a block of roadway, the, the vehicles in that half a block of roadway and the drivers driving those vehicles are never, ever, ever going to be the same. Every time you go there, you could go there every day for 10 years. Every time, the drivers are going to be different, the vehicles are going to be different, and that's one of the things that makes driving so challenging and makes it so complex and makes it uh, tough to learn and you got to practice to be able to do it and that's how you do it and the other thing about it is, is that learning hazard perception is only something that you can do behind the wheel so no I don't believe that at all there are people who have done it I'm not saying that there aren't but I don't think that you can be doing okay uh, okay Augustine parallel parking Corey will get the video up for you on parallel parking Jaden uh, by the way I told my car 2005 Beetle uh, <laughs> I <t> <laughs> there you go. Uh, sorry about that. That's that's uh, that's sad about your dog. My condolences. Iceberg, uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. I have my road test on February 12th. I'm so anxious. I'm trying to to obsess over it, but just want to get it over with. Iceberg, you're gonna do great. Okay, just keep practicing. Do the work that you need to do between now and then, and you're gonna be great. 
Okay, Augustine, how many minutes is the road test? Augustine, uh, did you tell me where you were? Okay, Augustine, where are you in the world? That will indicate how many minutes your road test is. Some in the states, like in New York State, uh, if Sam shows up, he's from Rookie Auto Driving School. He works in the Bronx. The road tests there are only about eight or 10 minutes. Uh, here in Ontario, they run about 20, 30 minutes. Other places, they have run as long as 45 minutes. So it kind of depends where you are in the world. Okay, uh, official, how many minutes is the road test? Same question. Cody, I meant driving lessons from a professional driving school. My dad has been an instructor. Oh, okay, sorry, Cody. <laughs> I went on for a long time. Yes, you can pass the, the road test without a professional driving lessons. But remember, your dad is a, is a driving instructor. Is your dad a driving instructor or is he a driving examiner, Cody? Just clarify that for me. Mohammed, how are you, my friend? Jaden, I'm going to join the Law Enforcement Explorer program, but once I'm old enough, I might get a job as a law enforcement. Excellent, that's great. Uh, Corey, over here in Winnipeg, from memory, the road test was about a half an hour. Yeah, and that's, that's about average, is 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, but some of the states that are very busy, uh, it's gonna be eight to 10 minutes. And official, it might be eight to 10 minutes for you. Kadeen, um, hope you're having a blessed Sunday. I'm currently on my ninth lesson with my instructor and my road test is February 27. I have six more lessons with my instructor. Kadeen, it sounds like you're doing everything right. You're getting professional driving lessons with a driving instructor and you're going to do really well. I think you're gonna do great on your test there. You got lots of time. So you got another five or six weeks before your road test. So you're gonna be well prepared. Uh, what's the feedback that you're getting from your driving instructor, Kadeen? Uh, Excellent, Jaden. That's some good uh, driving influence there. Paramedics and firefighters, they've got some uh, high level of driving skills, so that's going to help you out as well. Uh, Kadeen, would it be good to move to go ahead and buy my car before my actual road test? Uh, Kadeen, yeah, for sure. You can buy your car before your road test. I just, just don't get caught without a license driving it, those types of things. Uh, you know, just <laughs> be patient because you don't want that to happen. That would be very bad. Himal, how close do you need to go through a yellow light? Okay, so there's a video here. Himal, that's a, a great question. Uh, no vehicle will stop in its own length. So if you're one vehicle length from the stop line, uh, you're gonna have to stop the, you're gonna have to proceed through the intersection. You're gonna have to cover the brake. You're gonna have to scan the intersection to make sure it's safe to do so. Now, before you bring the vehicle to a screeching halt and for the purposes of a road test, you might have to do that, especially for CDL drivers who are driving school buses or tractor trailer units. Sometimes you gotta bring it to a screeching stop uh, when the light turns yellow because if you're in the intersection and the light turns red, if the driving examiner sees that, unfortunately that is an automatic fail on a road test. So know that, all right? So you might have to bring the vehicle to a screeching halt to get it stopped for a yellow light. Now, before you do that, and this is imperative for a road test, is that make sure that you check that center mirror before you bring the vehicle to a stop so you don't get somebody up all in your trunk, okay? Because they will park in your trunk and you don't want to be rear-ended. <coughs> if that happens, excuse me, you might have to proceed through the intersection, okay? And if you proceed through the intersection, just tell the examiner what you did. Say, listen, somebody was tailgating me. I didn't want to bring it to a stop because it was dangerous and you proceeded through the yellow light. Now, I will tell you, there is a time delay. There's a dead zone in the intersection from the time that your light turns red to the time that the other cross traffic turns green, there's a two second delay. And they do that for purposes of safety in case that somebody runs the light. So if you do run the yellow light, because somebody's tailgating you behind, you can't safely bring the vehicle to a stop. Know that, that you've got a two second delay to get through the intersection, but you still need to be covering the brake. Corey will get the video up for you on covering the brake and scanning the intersection as you're proceeding through the intersection to do that safely uh, if you do proceed through on a yellow light. Uh, UK, uh, hello my best teacher, pray for me. I have my G2 road test on January 22. So January, that's, Today's the 20th, so that's Tuesday. Yes, good luck on your road test. That is awesome that you're gonna be taking your road test on Tuesday. So be sure to drop back and let us know how that goes. Uh, it'll be great to hear how you did. William, you keep going if it's too unsafe to stop, otherwise stop. Uh, William, if you're too far from the intersection, if you're more than one vehicle length from the intersection, you're gonna to have to bring the vehicle to a stop for the purposes of passing a road test. 
it changes obviously when you start to drive after you get your license but for the purposes of the road test if you're more than one vehicle length from that intersection you need to bring it to a stop if it's safe to stop and there's nobody tailgating you okay Jaden uh, Hornets was so I did is <laughs> there you go Jaden okay Cody my dad is not working as a driving instructor he teaches me hazard perception I learned from your channel and the manual on technicalities for roads. Excellent. Jonathan, as a school bus driver, went on the highway, I need a considerable distance between the front of my bus and the car ahead, and I've seen other people cut off in front of me too close. Yes, Jonathan, in a commercial vehicle, particularly in a school bus, you want to have a following distance of five seconds. That's going to keep you safe. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. UK, thanks. You're welcome. Jonathan, which is illegal here in New York State? I'm not sure. Jonathan, okay. One time when the lines are solid on the highway curves, I see people wrongfully cross them when supposed to. Uh, okay, so Jonathan, one of the things about it has to be to not uh, to prohibit passing on road markings. It has to be double solid. On a single solid, you can pa pass with caution. A lot of people are, are mistaken about that, so know that. Okay, Kadeen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I know close friends where I live, so I watch your videos repeatedly to build my confidence. That's a, that's excellent, Kadeen. Uh, Kadeen, is there any way you can get down to a parking lot and work with some pylons and those types of things? Because that's another option. Uh, the other option, uh, if you don't have family around, I mean, there are senior centers around and those types of things. I mean, just put a, an ad in you know one of the local classifieds on Kijiji in your local area, those types of things indicating that you're looking for a mentor you're looking for somebody that can be in the vehicle with you who has a license there's lots of seniors around who you know they're retired they don't have anything to do and they would be more than happy to help you out i mean you know you might have to give them a couple of dollars or maybe buy them a, a gift or something like that but there are lots of people who would be more than willing to help you out and i saw here when i was putting together the presentation on the glp uh, for mentors that in the state of Victoria in Australia Vic Roads which is the driving authority there actually has a mentor program where they will train mentors to help new drivers learn how to drive so have a look around um, just because you don't have family or friends that can act as mentors for you to learn how to drive there are other ways to do that and be a bit proactive you know put a put an ad up in those types of things and you may be able to find somebody that can help you out too uh, learn to drive and get more practice. <clears throat> Sorry, because I'm all about practice. Uh, Iceberg, thank you, Rick. I just have to remind myself that it shouldn't uh, be that hard. I know what I'm doing, and I'm pretty sure I do because I'm a safe driver. And if there's people, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Okay, uh, you can pass it for sure, Iceberg. You're going to do great. Uh, Jacob, if the rightmost lane ends in the middle of the road and you are on the left of the ending lane and someone applies their turn signal to get over, should I let them over to prevent you uh, cutting off? Uh, Jacob, if you can, uh, you might have to kind of manage your space there, but if you can just kind of let off the throttle, I'm not, I wouldn't advocate that you do hard braking to be able to let them in. I mean, unless of course you risk having uh, a crash with that other vehicle. But if it's just a matter of you just letting off the throttle and slowing down a little bit and they just speed up and then they move in front of you, then yeah, for sure, you can help them out. Because uh, we all know that driving is a social activity and we all have to help each other out. So if you can do that, then I certainly advocate that you do that, okay? All right, uh, Carl Ann, uh, Carly Ann, sorry. Uh, where can you get those cones and pylons for rent? Uh, local rental shop, Carly Ann, uh, have a look. Uh, we have one here called uh, Norval Rentals in town. Just look up rental shops, places that rent um, trailers and construction equipment and those types of things. Uh, they will, sometimes they'll rent those cones. The other thing you could do, Carly Ann, is if you can't get the, the delineators, they're called delineators, they're one meter tall, 36 inch, 36 inch tall pylons. If you can't get those, then just get the short witch's hats and then put a stick in them and that'll that'll work for you too uh, for the pylons as well <laughs> iceberg I've watched around 80 of your vids excellent iceberg well thank you for helping promote the channel because that certainly helps the, the channel that's really great uh, 
Jonathan, uh, when you're on curves, there are signs that say never to cross the single line when on curves on the highway, and I've seen people do it. Yeah, unfortunately, Jonathan, this and this this comes back to the point that I always make about driving, is that it's not a matter of if other people are going to do goofy things on the roadway. They're always going to do goofy things. That's that's just a matter of that's just a matter of driving. It's a matter of when they're going to do it. And you need to put skills and strategies in place that are going to protect you. And when some goofball goes out there and is passing on curves or passing on the on hills and those types of things, just say to yourself, well, you're a dummy and you can go and have your crash somewhere else. And you just let off the throttle, you increase your space between you and the goofball that's driving like a maniac and let them go and have their crash somewhere else and just, you know, do your thing and carry on with your life. Too often, many drivers get into trouble because they're like, they're all concerned about that other person. And, you know, it's philosophy for life. Driving is a philosophy for life because we get all out of bent out of shape because, you know, my brother John was doing this and he went out and he stayed up till 3 o'clock in the morning. He upset my parents, blah, blah, blah. Driving is no different. You got to focus on what you're doing. And if you can focus on what you're doing, you're going to be great. And when something happens that people are doing that, they're passing on curves and passing on hills. You just say, ah, that happened. Okay, my friend Ryan is here. <laughs> uh, yes, okay, and thank you for that reminder, Ryan. That's excellent. Uh, excellent, okay, Iceberg. Uh, yes, drivers with disabilities. Thank you, Ryan, for reminding me of that. I will put that on my list of things to do. Official, uh, what is the first thing you do when you're about to take your driving test, your mirrors or your seatbelt? Uh, official, you're going to be in the vehicle that you're going to be taking your road test in. You're going to drive that vehicle to the test center, so you're already going to have your mirrors set up. Okay? So when you get in the vehicle, first thing you do is you turn the key to the on position, you know, when the lights come on. Unless you have a push button, then you're not going to do that. Just put your seatbelt on and then start the car and then you're ready to go. Okay? Know that at uh, your, when you do the test, official, and this is a good point, thank you for raising this point. Uh, the driving examiner is going to come out and they're going to do a mini pre-trip on your vehicle. They're going to get check the lights, check the horns, those types of things. And Corey will get the video up for you here. You should do a thorough pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. If you're taking your own pers personal vehicle, excuse me, uh, down to the road test, make sure that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. Make sure all the lights work, that you clean the vehicle. There isn't, you know, <laughs> the, the foot wells aren't full of fast food wrappers and those types of things. Okay, so do all of that because you don't want to be denied your test because you got a brake light out or something like that. So make sure you do that and Corey will get that video up for you as well. Okay, uh, so as I said, official to answer your question, you already should have the mirrors adjusted. Uh, just put your seatbelt on and do the mini pre-trip and then you can carry on. Okay, uh, Augustine, I love your videos from Peabody. Thank you so much, Augustine. That's really great and that helps me out. And Cody, I'm learning with a Toyota Yaris, great vehicle for learning how to drive. Yes, it is. It is, uh, that is one of the really good ones for learning how to drive. Corollas, Civics, those types of things, they're all good vehicles. Uh, UK, can I change lanes after a left turn without asking the examiner? Uh, yes, UK, as soon as you make a left-hand turn, as soon as you make a left-hand turn, you have to get back over to the right and have a look at the video on left-hand turns, okay? Uh, blessed, hello, blessed, how are you? Uh, I just want to say hello and have a blessed week and you as well, my friend. Uh, Michael, I taught myself how to drive manual transmission just by watching your series. You are a great teacher. Thank you so much, Michael, and congratulations on learning how to drive manual. That's really great. I'm glad we can help you out with that. That's awesome. Okay, uh, today someone turned left in front of me out of the driveway. I had to brake to avoid hitting him. Some people don't focus enough. Yeah, and it's going to happen, Cody. It's just It just does. Uh, remember, uh, if the opposite traffic has their advanced green for left turn, do I have the right of way to turn right before them? So basically, we're getting in the same uh, road direction. No, remember, if they have an advanced green and you're making a right, you have to give way to the traffic that's making the advance that's turning left on the advanced green. You, as the right making the right turn, have to give way to the left turning vehicle so long as they have an advanced green. Okay, great question, awesome question. Uh, August, Augustine, what can they ask before you start your test? Okay, so uh, 
Augustine, have a look at the video on 10 tips uh, to prepare for your road test. You have to take down paperwork, show up early, check in. Some centers will be different than others. Some will just tell you to park and the driving examiner will come out. Other driving centers, you're going to have to go in and actually check in before you do your test. They're not going to ask you a lot of knowledge test questions. What they're interested in is being able to see whether you can actually drive the car or not. So that's what's going to happen for the purposes of your road test. Okay, They're not going to ask you a lot of knowledge tests. They might ask you some. If you missed something, for example, you missed a road sign and it was important to your driving, they might say, oh, what did that road sign mean back there, this or that, or blah, blah, or what's the speed limit if you're going a little bit too fast. And sometimes when they ask you questions on a road test, the reason they're asking those questions is because you missed something and they're kind of cueing you because they can't just say to you, hey, you're speeding. They're going to say, oh, what's the posted speed limit right here? Because they're kind of going, hey, wink, wink. They're trying, the examiners, most driving examiners are going to try and help you out. And little doubt there's, you know, there are driving examiners that are ogres. Like, wow, 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 wow. There's some of those out there. Okay, but for the most part, most of them are going to help you out. And they're and when they're asking you those little questions, that's what they're doing. They're kind of prodding you to say, hey, something you missed something here. Pay attention. Okay, uh, Chris, I'm having difficulty with left-hand turns at intersections. Is exposing my right flank. Reminds me of car accidents being as a pasture. Any advice? Uh, yes, Chris. Uh, Chris, have you seen the video on turning left at complex intersections? Have a look at that. That will help you out as well. No, let me back up. Corey will put up the entire playlist on left-hand turns because I have a whole playlist on left-hand turns. Have a look through those and, and that will give you the information that you need. Uh, turning left at complex intersections will help you the, the most, okay? Uh, Jaden, this morning I could not get any sleep because there was a storm at my house in Florida. But you live in Florida. You have hurricanes, Jaden. <laughs> uh, Chris, my back gets up. Excellent. Cody, uh, whenever dad fills the car with gas and he asks me to open the gas cap, I keep opening the hood. Uh, yeah, that happens, Cody. And, uh, you know, even as a veteran driver, I've been in people's different cars and I try to open the fuel cap to put fuel in it and I open the hood. So it's just a matter of going and <laughs> it's just a matter of going back and closing the hood and then opening the, the fuel cap. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> Chris, you're most welcome. Okay, uh, all about vehicles. Good night, my friend. Have a great night. All the best. Uh, official, can I use my backup camera? No, you can't official. The only place that you can use a backup camera is the state of New Jersey. Every other jurisdiction uh, has a different... Uh, you have to look out the back window. So you put your hand over the back of the passenger seat and you look out the back window. Make sure you do a 360 degree scan beforehand. You can kind of, you know, look down at it, kind of have a glance at it, but for the most part, you want to be looking out the back window when you're backing up for the purposes of passing your road test. All right, and if we have any more questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those. All right, and uh, for those of you watching on the replay, if you're new to Smart Drive Test, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license. Veteran drivers to remain crash free and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. So be sure to uh, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell. That way you'll get instant notification and, you know, share around on social media. All of that will help you out. Okay. And uh, for those of you going for a license, make sure you head over to the Smart Drive Test website and sign up for the driver's license checklist and get that checklist. And that will help you out as well. And as well, we'll put you on the email list. And we will send you helpful tips to pass your road test, helpful tips for you to learn how to drive and whatnot. So sign up for that as well and uh, we'll help you out. Okay. Radia, I am nervous on exam day and I fail road test four times. What can I do? You're in the UK. Okay. So Radia, you're going to have to go back to fundamentals. And what I would suggest to you as well is to work with a driving instructor so that you can, you can move forward and be successful on your next test. Go back over the reports that the driving examiners gave you and identify why you were unsuccessful on your road test. And all of that will help you out to be uh, successful on your next attempt, okay? Cody, you have a heavy foot. <laughs> Cody, uh, I've been driving for a long time and I too am a fairly aggressive driver. And uh, it just, it happens. You just need to know that if you have a heavy foot, what you need to do, Cody, is you need to manage space around your vehicle because I'm very much of the opinion that it's not speed that gets people into into trouble. It's not it's not speed that gets drivers into trouble. What it gets drivers into trouble is that when they speed, 
they do not manage space. So they don't stay away from other road users and fixed objects. And because there's, there's no space buffer there, when they're speeding, they're too close. And when something happens, they don't have any room to mitigate that. And that's why they get into trouble. So if you got a heavy foot and you know you like to drive fast, don't tailgate other vehicles. Don't get close to other vehicles. Stay away from them. Because if you stay away from them, then you have that buffer of space, okay? So yes, you can have a heavy foot after you get your license and know that the other piece is, and people are surprised when I tell them this, after you get your license for purposes of being safe, stay with the traffic flow, drive with the traffic flow. And in most places, the traffic flow is going to be five to 10 miles an hour or five to 15 kilometers an hour higher than the posted speed limit. If you are staying with the traffic flow after you get your license, after you get your license, there's the key words, you're going to be safer because you're going to be predictable on the roadway. I am convinced that people get into traffic crashes because they do something that is unpredictable and other drivers on the roadway or other road users cannot react in time to that unpredictable action and that's why people get into trouble, okay? Chris, uh, do you both hands need to be on the wheel while backing up during the examination? Great question. Thank you for that, Chris. No, you only need to have one hand on the steering wheel while you're backing up for the, uh, for the purposes of the road test. It's only when you're going in a forward motion that you have to have both hands on the steering wheel. Okay, Michael, choose the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Thank you, Michael. Amino, I've been driving for almost 10 years and went back to get my chauffeur's license, and they said have to be test because I have too many tickets, so went back and failed twice, embarrassed. Oh, well, Amino, I hope we can help you out. So have a look at the videos here on the channel. Uh, Radia, thanks for giving us confidence. You're most welcome, and we can. I'm glad that we can help you out. And again, if you're watching on the replay, consider subscribing, consider hitting that thumbs up button and leaving us a comment. So we're gonna wrap that up for today. Thanks everybody for showing up to the live stream and asking questions and participating. If you have any questions at all, leave us a comment down in the comment section there. We'll do what we can to help you out. I will stick around for a few minutes. There's still a few more comments here coming through, so I'll try and answer those. I'll just leave you a comment and whatnot. So uh, yeah, do that and uh, be sure if you pass your road test, if you had a road test and you passed the last couple of weeks, be sure to head over to the Smart Drive Test website and sign up for the 100K campaign. And as I said, 2019, the New Year's resolution is to get that going and give you more information about that initiative to help 100,000 people pass the road test this year. All right, and if you have a road test coming up this week or you're working in the next few weeks, uh, good luck with that. And if you have any questions, by all means, drop us a note. We'd be more than happy to help you out. So thanks very much. Have a great night. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All the best. Bye now.